So I'm a, I'm a product manager here at, uh, at VMware and that focused mostly on day two network operations. And I'm going to introduce uh, a new beta feature that we have, which is the guided network troubleshooting. Raul Chawate will, uh, will join me later and, and give the demo. Now, of course, because this is beta, we have to give the standard uh, disclaimer here. Like, don't expect that this is going to be exactly what you get in your product if it is actually released to GA. We're, we're feeling pretty good about it, but you know, just uh, please take a second to read the disclaimer. And then to uh, to kind of set the the table a little bit here. So there's uh, there's four key areas that we're looking at in day two operations, and uh, that's prevention, continuous monitoring troubleshooting, which we're going to talk about today, and collaboration. Of course, we just spent a good amount of time on the prevention and continuous monitoring that's included with the network assurance and verification. And typically, we look at those for reducing incident rates and reducing risk, right? We want to regress, do regression testing for your network to make sure you're catching things as things are changing, and then finding uh, latent issues before they become problems. Now, what we're talking about today in this session is the troubleshooting. So obviously we're looking at uh, reducing mean time to innocence, uh, mean time to inside, mean time to repair. And we do this by presenting uh, relevant data to the user, do the analysis and visualization, and then allow the user to, uh, to crawl through a, a dependency graph, which you're gonna see in the demo. And of course, everything comes down to collaboration when it comes to day two operations. We, uh, the goal here is to try and reduce escalations and facilitate knowledge transfer. So things like ITSM integration, sending traps, shared dashboards, pin boards, and whatnot. And specifically when it comes to troubleshooting are saving these sessions so that they can be recalled later if the problem or a similar application has the same sort of issue. Uh, we can see those sessions and then notes to share between uh, the different users. So we looked at, at three real core uh, troubleshooting challenges, and that comes down to network complexity, siloed knowledge, and time to insight. I think we're all kind of familiar with this, right? Networks are growing in complexity. The rate of change is, is never stopping and increasing, so not too much to spend there. We have the, the siloed knowledge. There's Because of this complexity, we have a, a boatload of different teams that are now interacting, and they have their own ownership of the intent of the network, and uh, they have their own skills. And even within those uh, those different teams, they have their own tool sets, and there's even skill level uh, pyramids, right? You have first, second level, or junior through senior engineers. So trying to bring all those together and that knowledge into to one spot is, is is a big challenge. And of course, the time to insight, right? Simple questions like what's normal, what's changed, what's relevant, what what is dependent on this? Is there another application dependent on this router or this uh, this physical element? Can we get those? And uh, the problem is there's an unlimited amount of data today and the engineers are left to the manual correlation, right? So we're doing this typically by hand or stare and compare type of activities, which is uh, prone to error and uh, just really time consuming. So really what's what's the answer? So how does Verney help? So we have, uh, we've developing this guided troubleshooting workflow. And fundamentally, you start today with an app, a VM, or an event. And uh, from there, you can explore a dependency tree. And this is basically anything that's related to this app, VM, or event, right? So we can, we can follow through and, and see what's related in any dependencies there. And then there's a correlation engine that's running in the background that's now identifying if there's any anomalies between, uh, say, at the peer level or in the NSX level and, and, and whatnot to help guide the engineer to what's relevant here, right? So if, uh, if nothing's going on in my flows and connectivities, I don't really need to look there right now, but there's clearly something, an anomaly in my, my NSX. So let's drill down and see what that actually means. And once I do this, I can see all the metrics related, and then I can do an analysis to show the correlation and, and, and basically guide uh, the user to the, the true root cause in record time. So that was a mouthful, and uh, I did this pretty quickly, so hopefully uh, this kind of sets the table for what we're about to see. Um, it's available as early access, so anyone who's uh, running Verney SaaS or uh, on-prem 6.1, 6.2, reach out to your account team, and, and we can get this enabled and, and work through it. Uh, if there's no questions, and we're, we're kind of, what do we have, like 10 minutes left, yeah, I'll shoot it over to Raul if there's no questions uh, for me at this time to do actual demo. 
Hi, uh, my name is Rahul Chavate, and I am the lead engineer on this for the guided troubleshooting workflow. So here we have a couple of short demos. The first one is we'll start from a VM that seems to have a problem and drill down its dependencies to figure out how we can pinpoint to a potential root cause of that problem. And in the second demo, we'll quickly uh, show how this troubleshooting workflow can be used as a single pane of glass to look at all the dependencies, the infrastructure dependencies of an application and see everything on one dashboard. So uh, here is a bit of uh, introduction about what the scenario is in the first demo. So we have, uh, this is an actual uh, case uh, that was lodged uh, at a customer and we have anonymized the data and ingested that data into a demo setup that we have. So we have an application uh, having a typical backend, which is the database, the front end, there is a proxy, and there are a bunch of clients accessing this application. Now, this is uh, similar to a wiki application, uh, a wiki server, and the incident that was lodged was to investigate why suddenly for the last few hours, uh, many clients are facing a lot of slowness in accessing this wiki application. So it seems uh, this the complexity here arises from the fact that the only data we have to troubleshoot this is probably something is wrong with the front end server of the wiki application that could be a starting point, but there are tons of possibilities as to what could have gone wrong here. So also uh, there is constant time pressure on probably a first level junior engineer who is working on troubleshooting this issue and probably the management is expecting like continuous updates. So our goal is to help our user, the customer, to reduce the mean time to resolution or the MTTR and arrive at the root cause as fast as possible. So I switch over to the demo here. And let's say in Verni, what we have is, this is our typical Verni search engine kind of dashboard. And you can say, look for that particular VM. And when you enter, you get this list view. You have this troubleshoot button. And when you click on troubleshoot, we kind of open this troubleshooting dashboard. So the concept here is I dwell on it for a minute is we have this dependency graph of various entities and their metrics. And what we do here is in this dependency graph slash tree, uh, we do some statistical anom uh, anomaly detection on each metric. And if we find some anomaly in the metric pattern, we are kind of marking it as red. So this is a potential hint to the customer that please probe this further. And then on the uh, another thing that we do is for each edge in this dependency graph, we are doing some statistical correlation methods to correlate uh, the potential metrics on both the sides of the edge uh, and which could have some kind of relation. So if you find some correlation, which means that the metrics on both sides of this edge are kind of moving in some kind of lock step, then we have established a potential root cause and we want to flag it as red as well so that the customer can probe it further. So here, let's say we start troubleshooting from the wiki front end, which is the wiki F1 VM, and we see the first level of dependencies. So self here indicates that we have, let me maximize this. So self here indicates that we are correlating metrics on both sides of the same entity. We can filter this quickly. We see that immediately we see that this particular VM is going to a lot of high load uh, in this duration. And this is probably, this is the same duration where the case was filed, that people were experiencing slowness in accessing this VM. So immediately it confirms that there is some problem in this VM and we want to troubleshoot this further. So let's deselect this and we'll move to the next group, which is red. So here are a bunch of flows and why we have marked these two flows as red. So there must be some kind of anomaly or correlation happening with these. So one of this first flow seems to be from this wiki F1 going to some particular backend port 2049, now which is like your NFS port. So this is going from front end to the backend. So let's see, we can look at this and there is some kind of aberration again in the same interval where we had experienced some uh, load, uh, more load on the CPU. And so we want to probe this further. So in probing this further, we expand its dependencies further. And what we see here is everything is blue. So probably what it means is we might have hit a dead end to the root cause analysis in this. So what we can do is, let's say we collapse this, we deselect this, and we move on to the next flow. Now this next flow, if you hover here, it seems to be the flow coming from the wiki VM, which is our proxy to the front end VM. 
Now, this should also potentially confirm that there is some kind of aberration in the metrics, again in the same range, uh, where we had seen the CPU load increase. So if you click on analysis, you can immediately see the visual correlation as well. We have also marked red because we see a correlation where there's a correlation between the traffic rate of this particular flow as well as the VM traffic rate. So what this is telling us is that this particular uh, flow, which is coming from the proxy to my front-end VM could be the potential cause on increasing the CPU load. So we want definitely want to probe this further. So let's probe this further. We click on the dependency graph and now we are seeing here uh, again, something is red. So what it means is potentially we are on the right path in our root cause analysis. So let's expand what is red. So what we have found is we have found one flow, which is part of these dependencies of this particular flow, and it is marked as red. So what is this flow? There seems to be this kind of crawler kind of VM, which is hitting requests on our wiki proxy server. So it kind of what we have established is we have automatically inferred some relation between input traffic at the wiki proxy and output traffic flow at the wiki proxy. So even though that wiki proxy may be a black box for us, we have inferred automatically some kind of flow dependency. And if you select this and deselect this just to filter, we again see that the flow session count of this crawler VM had increased tremendously. And if you click on analysis, there is this visual correlation and also established by a backend correlation here. So we have found kind of a potential root cause that this particular flow might be the root cause of increasing the load on our CPU. And if we would definitely want to probe this further. And here we hit a dead end in the sense that there is everything is blue. So what we have established is there is this particular client whose VM does not have an anomaly but it is causing sending a lot of requests to our wiki server, increasing the load and potentially disrupting some normal users of our wiki server. So the next steps are obvious that there is some problem with this flow and you definitely want to talk to the owner of this application, crawler VM, and why they are hitting suddenly large requests to this wiki VM. So this and how many minutes have we passed? So probably in six, seven minutes, we have kind of narrowed down to a root cause, which could have taken maybe minutes or hours if you're looking at some siloed kind of applications for monitoring. So we have indeed helped the customer here to in the MTTR. Uh, so the, in the next demo, what we do is the same workflow we do for an application. And here we have an application dashboard. This is the same application that Matt had shown earlier, the high training sample application. Now in this case, there is no real uh, problem that was reported in any service desk uh, ticket. But what we want to show is if you click on troubleshoot of the application, we open this troubleshooting dashboard. And here what we have is we have the single pane of glass to show all the dependencies of this application. So we have this high training app. We have the VMs of the application. We have the host. We have the flows involved in this application. We have the virtual network, the NSXT edge VM, the transport node. We have the physical network, the Tor switch ports mentioned here, all the services involved here. And we can expand each one of them. And we also have hints. Now, these hints are telling us, are there any patterns or is there any patterns matching across the edges of the dependency graph? And we could potentially expand this further. What is the patterns for this storage VM? What is the pattern for this video VM? Another thing is we may not be interested in individual flows. Now, individual flows might be too much. There could be thousands or hundreds of thousands of them or even greater. So we also give this group by capability. You can group these flows by, let's say, source tier. And suddenly you see three tiers. And we have aggregated the metrics of the tier. And we see patterns here. For example, there are TCP retransmits happening here. There is this average TCP RTT showing some kind of pattern here. So we could select, we could actually look at metrics in an aggregated fashion. And there is a lot of group by capabilities here, source tier, test tier. And for each group by, we could also do sort in by traffic or TCP RTT, retransmit count, flow session count. So we essentially are giving you an entire view of the application infrastructure, the entire dependency graph in one pane of glass, the one single dashboard. And we can use this workflow to further look at the member flows. And then we can further expand like a troubleshooting workflow and a troubleshoot individual entities as well. In this case, for example, this one is interesting. There is a pattern on the NSX edge. Maybe it's bottleneck. So if the user wants to drill down further, they can always look at it further. And the other some of the cool features that we have here is we can always 
flag something. Let's say the troubleshooting session is going to take some time or you are uh, handing over the baton to another uh, user, another network admin. So another feature of this is, let's say if I minimize this, there is a collaboration feature. So multiple network admins are kind of doing something. So let's say there is RCA on flow X, Y, Z, something like this. And you can add a note and it will immediately show. So you can pass on the baton across network admins what you have found in the troubleshooting session. You can mark something as root cause and it will tell you whether you want to close the session or continue investigation. And you can mark multiple root causes. And let's say in finally you want to close the session and you can mark it as resolved. And let's say RCA found and something like that. And you can say submit. And this is kind of an entire end-to-end -end troubleshooting workflow. And this is under beta. So we are kind of eliciting a lot of customer feedback. And we are hoping that this customers will find a lot of use uh, to have this visibility in a single dashboard. Hey, so this is uh, all this is really cool. Um, and I have kind of a un semi unrelated question, but uh, I was curious in all the demos we've seen, um, there's that little uh, like professor hat down in the bottom there. Is that like the return of, of uh, Clippy? What, what is that? Uh, what is that <laughs> yeah, the, the professor, I'll, I'll take that. The professor hat is kind of an educating, educating hat if you don't know, so you want to learn more uh, about the product. Some people may not know that all these cool things exist in the product. Uh, so we are making it a lot more uh, uh, interesting to say, hey, you've, you've done, you know, from what Vernon can offer, you've only done 20% of this, right? For example, people may not have set up alerts. People may not have set up third-party devices. People may not have done the network assurance and verification features that Matt showed, right? So part of it is to educate them on here are the other features that you could go. Uh, just a quick, a quick glance to see where you are at in the Vernon usage journey as well. <laughs> 